So would love to ask all of you to talk a little bit about the evolution of your pieces. I guess I'm closest. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so um, uh, my day job is uh, social work, um, and that was never my trajectory. Um, and I think on my job, I was introduced to a specific uh, type of community that doesn't get uh, the attention they usually, um, you know, their stories aren't told as much. And I think what was exciting to me was I was introduced to this uh, sort of different idea of what uh, a love is, that it's a, that it's wider than I imagined, because me and the staff, we, we seem to sort of laugh at the strange relationships that happen, that, because I worked in housing, I should say. I worked in housing, and it was a tight community there, and the strangest relationships came about, and uh, we sort of laughed at how these weird couples that were coming about. And uh, So being on that job, I was exposed to a sort of wider idea of what a relationship can be, um, and I think that's where the play began to uh, percolate for me. Uh, I was in my last semester at Brooklyn College, and I, I had a kind of monkish experience at Brooklyn College, and so I found myself just kind of wondering what, what romance was for, and also being really irritated at the women's roles in Judd Apatow movies, for instance, which are completely entertaining, but the women are dull. And I heard about a production, a, a, a reading of this screenplay of American Pie in which all the genders were reversed and the men were complaining that their roles were very boring. <laughs> and I thought, yes, it's time for me to write a love story because I don't believe in love and I'm tired of the usual progress of it and then it, 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 it's, I, I couldn't start it any other way but with a discussion about making sausage. So <laughs> <laughs> it developed into this bar play about food and sex and why we go to bars and what we want out of our urban environments and where we look for pleasure and what happens when we find pleasure and is it all good and, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our thing came out of, a while ago, Steph uh, had gotten really into reading biographies of uh, like tech startup people, uh, like Steve Jobs, and there's a book about Twitter, and... Uh, You're doing great. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, and it just got us kind of talking about the idea of success as it exists in our culture right now, and um, it kind of got us thinking, you know, about life and stuff. <laughs> Uh, and, and also it, it got us thinking about mythology and kind of the way that like success stories are sort of the type of mythology that we have uh, in present day and that they give kind of these models for what a good life looks like. And um, so our process, we do kind of a lot of experimentation with actors and a lot of playing around. We try to find a feeling that feels central to what we're talking about. So in this case, we were looking at kind of the idea of specialness or uh, like when, if somebody seems like they have that kind of very special something, or removing that, which is really related to success and failure. We kind of do all these experiments around 
creating this feeling in a theatrical context, and then kind of based on all that and lots of discussions, I'll go and write something in response. And this piece uh, is kind of smack in the middle of the play. Uh, and it's, I think, something that we've talked about a lot is that to succeed is in a way, like to have the metric of success and failure means that there's some kind of image of what it is that you're trying to succeed at. Because if there's an image, then you could fail to achieve it. But there's kind of always this push and pull of like, well, one way to not feel like a failure is to abandon the image. But you know, the person that we see is kind of stuck in this thing of like, oh, it's just that I need a better image. So I don't know, we're, we're trying to figure out something about what it is to, to be a person in that kind of construction. You did great. Thank you. It was our partnership. Um, so I was riding the train home with Ben Williams after a show last year, and he was just talking about his experience as a shoe salesman, uh, and he just made this statement, women in hats, they never buy. And I was just sort of taken <laughs> with like, just the grossness of sales, you know, and how it exploits the vulnerabilities on both sides. And just this image of a luxury shoe store as a manufactured image trying to be something it isn't, making you want something you don't. And then the parallels with this young combat vet who's like trying to convince you he's someone he's not with his, like his life is riddled with false narratives. So those two things together sort of sparked the thought there. And how about the directors? How did you get involved with the project? Well, um, uh, Jonathan had the opportunity to workshop this at Playpen this year, and so I was brought on to direct it there, and it was a fascinating process. Um, and uh, and so we've continued to work on it a little bit. It's um, I I think the main interest for me in in this is this. Uh, the issue of displacement. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in that and that Jonathan is. Um, and so uh, you just saw the very beginning of it, but the, that ticking um, is in there. Jonathan's written it in, but we've actually put it in because um, this is sort of a countdown to them being pushed out of their homes. Um, and so that context is really fascinating uh, to me. and. It's, it's also just a really juicy play to work on. It's like a Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, like someone said the other day. Um, so it's, it's been really fun to work with actors on it. Okay. Yeah, Kate and I have been working on Porto for like a year. It's our second project together. Um, yeah, I've just been talking a lot about that food and pleasure stuff. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And it will go up at the Bushwick Star, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going up in January. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're a company, so I was there at the inception. I was the inception. <laughs> so I've been with it the whole time, and now that he's written it, we're trying to make it. And it will go up at Abrams. I'll plug us in February. <laughs> Uh, we're also at Abrams, Woo! Um, uh, and uh, uh, as you heard, I was there at the train station um, talking about old jobs, selling shoes. Yeah. Now, when we put the festival together, we knew the motto was failure, but um, the artists that we choose in the project that we choose we did not look for, you know, that that was not, uh, you know, any open umbrella that, you know, any of these uh, projects should fit in. Now, having seen all of uh, the presentations today, it sort of, it weaves through in some way, right? It's like, uh, not necessarily failure all the time, but expectations and, you know, what do you live up to, expectations other people have on you. So what is your, how, what's your, um, did, you, did you think about this? Was there like something, you know, what's your relationship to failure? Um, I guess as a human being, I have a lot of relationship to failure, but, <laughs> um, and a playwright. Um, <laughs> but um, I think specifically, yes, the play is centered around institutional failure. 
um, and specifically on the job I work. Um, uh, a lot of the people I have worked with are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and uh, the stories are the stories I hear are all directly related to some sort of institutional failure, uh, family failure, uh, relationship failure. Um, um, so it was interesting to explore these stories in that way. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's something that happens um, like very soon after you stopped watching today in this play, which is sort of the heart of the play. Um, which uh, is they start talking about this baby that they had, and the baby um, died uh, probably because they killed the baby accidentally in some way. And so um, that, uh, that uh, sort of parenting failure, but as an institutional failure, like that these, that these people um, failed, sure, but that they were also failed. And, um, and that's like a really deep part of this play. And, and, and um, it's the thing you start to see at the beginning, but it sort of doesn't really unfold until a bit later in the play. Yeah, I suppose uh, maybe every, well, that, no, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say every play's about failure, but I don't think that it is. But I think, um, I think there's a, we fail to remember where our luxuries come from in the moment that we consume them, I think, because otherwise, how could we? You know, I've eaten, I am a barbarian. I have eaten a live sea urchin, and I, it, it was alive, and then I put it in my mouth, and I killed it with my teeth, and, I, and it was delicious. And I can't, I can't really understand, I fail to understand my own human animal in that way. I can know that something is bad for me, I can know that something is terrible for the world, I can understand that, that that restaurant that I really like is partly responsible for the displacement of people who used to have a community and affordable rent. I can understand that the animal was probably tormented, if not fully tortured, in its preparation on its way to my plate, and yet I still, you know, sit there and say, oh, I really, I'm gonna get a steak tonight and a, you know, and so I, the, the, our failure to, I suppose, live up to our own ideas about what our values are supposed to be, and our failure to understand ourselves as animals, and our failure to incorporate some kind of rational care for each other into the systems of the societies we make is a puzzle to me that I, I you know, it, it sort of makes me feel like I have the brain of, of a very, very small insect, or at least the memory of a very, very small insect. So, that. How do you follow that? Um, well, we started work on the show when I was uh, 29 and I was headed to 30. And I was really having a moment of like, mm, what have I done with my life or what am I doing with my life? Do I wanna keep doing what I'm doing? Um, and so I think in some ways our show started from the point of possible failure or like even like can failure exist if you don't want it, <laughs> if you don't want the version of success. Uh, so yeah, I f and that feels like super at the core of our show is the dichotomy between failure and success and how you take on those two things and whether you have to take on those two things um, and sort of how to move forward. It, when faced with the, the severity of those two things. Yeah, I mean, our, our central character, Dennis, is failed by every system that's supposed to be in place to help him. He spends his play trying to stop failing himself in his choices. And, and it's also, a, the play's very much about the struggle between this guy and his subconscious and his, these, these kind of, primal things that he can't really control. Um, uh, and a lot of that is also because it's a product of the Iraq war, which, boom, there you go, failure. <laughs> well, do we have any audience questions, perhaps? Soldiers who come back to Vietnam, and people from prison who 
And you don't you just tuck in yours and they all kind of weave through the failure you find success sometimes you find through. So uh, I guess the question is, what did you learn? I actually I moved home to Detroit for a year in the process of making this show. Um, and I think in some way I learned that it is a that there's a lot of construct, a lot of the things that we think we want or, or don't want or think are failures or successes. Uh, they're things we have we choose to buy into and we and we don't have to. I think that's what I learned. Yeah, and I think going on that, it's like yeah, that, that process of acculturation, uh, it goes on with every person at every moment. And I think like realizing that they are, that these ideas of success or what a life looks like or feels like are constructed is so helpful. And at the same time, it's so scary to try to abandon that. And what is it, how do you abandon that? Knowing that like, what, what am I if not the things that I define myself as or the things that the culture or the world that I, that I live in defines me as is, uh, scary to precipice to jump off of. So, um, well, thank you all for coming. 6 p.m. is the next, uh, we have a conversation at 6 p.m. So I hope you'll stay and come back. Thank you all for participating and for really, you know, presenting amazing work. So we're looking forward to seeing your shows. <laughs> thank right. you. Thanks, Anshu. Thank you.